Hi everyone, my name is Gary Harrison, and welcome to my pod of Fancast. Yeah, what's on the menu? Madonna, traveling through, we always realize in life that we have to leave sometimes people behind. Facts are stubborn things. Who would have thought a young lady from Pontiac, Michigan would grow up to rule the world? To see fear as just an adversity that she can cross over in a leap of faith. Yeah, the five leverages points of success, time, money, information, relationships, and self-esteem. She seemed to dominate all. With all the reinvention she has done over the duration of her years in this life, she never seems to lose the discipline, the vision, ambition, and determination, drive, and self-determination what people so call claim that makes you a star whatever that means today she had a good fortune of coming up in the age of where no Instagram was around and social media and TikTok and tweet tweet and all that that part you know what I'm talking about she was around when people were still caring about artistry Yes, a young white woman who was not the typical snow bunny was going to make America love her like a princess. She was not going to be the conforming white angel Barbie princess that we were used to seeing in shows like The Brady Bunch growing up in America in those days. Now, my life somehow had the good fortune of crossing paths with Madonna in her trajectory. I want to focus on those rudimentary years that made her who she was. Here's a young lady who was inspired through driving herself because she never wanted to fail. She was really interested in achieving. Her father said she was an achiever. By losing her mother very early at the age of six and a half, that was very drastic. A drastic loss. Tragic, if you may. She had to get used to and accustomed to very early in her age. To be a motherless child. Madonna grew up. The oldest sister from eight children. She said to have had a puritanical middle class upbringing. Yeah, but she was not so into it. I mean, she said she was not into the provincial way of living, the province way of life. She was not into it. But it's what nurtured her with the dichotomy of religion and the secular. That was her world. One of the things that she mentioned is that once she moved from Pontiac to Rochester, Michigan, it was more of the suburbs area where she was more around people that looked like her, basically. And she said the fact that in Pontiac, it was more of a mixed, where more black folks were there. And, you know, you got to re- realize that this was also Detroit, Motown, father worked as an engineer for General Motors. 
So this was quintessential to the fact that she she grew up with all kinds of different music and and loved Motown. And of course you hear that influence of her music today, like black music and she revered very much. Very early on, she was somebody who did not really conform to convention. You know, she would challenge things that people would tell her to do. And if it's something that she's strongly against, she would rebel. Yeah, she was truculent. Most children are, but she was special. As I mentioned, Madonna was a super achiever. So she did very well in school, got very good grades, and managed to even graduate early at the age of 17. During this process, she she said that when she went to school in this other area, she said she was a bit socially reserved because uh, she found the children to be a bit stupid. Yeah, that's her words. Well, somehow stupid can mean she couldn't relate because sometimes I think when you're in tune with yourself very early, you can definitely see the difference in how you are going and where they're going. And sometimes it just means you have to stay within yourself until you meet the right people. She eventually did. She met her first mentor. That was Christopher Flynn, her ballet teacher. He inspired her to want to have a career in dance, where she eventually got a scholarship to go to the University of Michigan. That was a major, major move with that relationship. Because what Christopher Flynn did in her life was introduce her to the eclectic choices. He was also one of the first gay men she met. Opened up a world about life juxtaposed to what she was experiencing at home with her very conservative Catholic father. So let's see what we got. We got her receiving information, creating relationships, building up her self-esteem. All these components are very important because as she moves forward in her life, she will discover that she wants to expound upon her skill sets. During this process, Christopher Flynn mentioned to her, look, I think you need to see the world. Coming to this university is all fine and dandy, but there's a bigger world out there than Rochester, Michigan. And he suggested for her to go to New York. And being the fact that Madonna was already very adventurous, she took him up on it and decided to travel out of Michigan. Now, mind you, through all of this, she was never thinking about how she would delve into the world of music. That didn't even cross her mind. So, myth has it, she traveled to New York and she went there with $35 in her pocket. The taxi cab driver dropped her in the middle of nowhere or the middle of where everything was happening, according to the story. And he dropped her off in the middle of Times Square. (laughs) The taxi cab driver had a sense of humor because I could think of many places where he could have dropped her off and Times Square is definitely not one of them but anyway big up to New York 
I grew up there, so nothing but respect. So after a series of events, she basically got herself settled and began to pursue through a bunch of connections that she did have her area in dance. So she managed to work with Martha Graham, the noted American dance and choreographer, took classes by the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, and Pearl Lang. These are dance established artists. Now, mind you, I said, music was not even in her mind. It's when she decided to see how arduous it is in the dance world, especially in New York, where the competition is high. Yeah, it's no joke in New York. We got a lot of great, great dance performers. Not saying that she couldn't hang, but it's very competitive. I can tell you, I was one of them. So Madonna comes out of her comfort zone and, and finds it challenging in the world of dance and decided to go left. She decided to leave that pursuit in the dance world and decided to become a singer. Yeah, um, yeah. She managed to get a gig with Patrick Hernandez as a backup singer. He was French, so she traveled to France with him, I think two months or something like that, summer, and performed backup. And um, saw a chance to maybe get involved in music but then was discouraged and came back to New York. And at the time, uh, she met Dan Gilroy, a member of the Breakfast Club band. The band The Breakfast Club. And uh, yeah, they lived together in an abandoned synagogue in Corona, Queens. Now we're talking like the time she moved to New York, that was like the July 78, right? On the cusp of Saturday Night Fever from John Travolta. I remember that. Very, very, very big movie. And she came around this time when that was going to go down. Well, Madonna learned how to play drums. And she also learned at this time to play guitar. So she was kind of honing her skills in in the music world through this boyfriend she had, Dan Gilroy. Yeah. Started learning how to write songs. That's how determined she was. Super achiever. She started finding another skill set, singing and as I said, she had a chance to perform with Patrick Hernandez. Through all of that, she formed a band called Emmy. Eventually, finding a manager and had a chance to get a record deal. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not. It doesn't. It's not as uh, as easy as I'm making it sound. She had challenges where she was living, back and forth. She was commuting all over the place. But what got her through that was most likely her faith in herself, in her God, and her just overall perseverance for life. You know, it is said that she used to go to the club, dance interior, every, every day with that demo, her first 
song called Everybody Every Day just because she wanted them to play the DJ, the demo. She eventually got a record producer, Mark Cummins, to get involved and help to produce the record. He had a connection to Sire Records. And while Seymour Stein, the founder of Seymour, of, of Sire Records, excuse me, he just had an operation, right? She went in. The guy just finished an operation and wanted to meet her. So he gave her a deal right there when he met her. He was amazed by her tenacity, her charisma, and what he heard on the demo and went for it. The rest we can say is history, right? But it worked out. She created all these relationships and got to the point of where she can be the super achiever in the music business. She achieved all of that. So a lot of people always criticize Madonna for her relationships and how she got with this one and that one. And I, and I contributed to this. She said it herself. I mean, somehow there are people who helped you along the way and sometimes they're not going with you. So you have to leave them behind, you know. Some people make it sound like she was some kind of functional nympho. I hate that because I know that lady worked hard. It's not easy to, to become someone in this entertainment industry. Trust me, I can tell you that. So, yeah, how my path crossed with Madonna is my group was dancing on Long Island and we won a dance contest for a local radio station in New York, a very famous one, I won't mention the name. And she had the song out in 83 called Holiday from her first album. And she was performing in this club on Long Island where we won the contest and we had a chance to open up for her. We never got to meet her, but what was great about that was that I saw her in the initial stages before she really, really exploded. And that was a joy to see. And since then, I was a, I was a supporter of this young lady who I never knew about, really. In fact, the first song I heard from her that I remember is Physical Attraction from that the early records, you know. And a DJ friend of mine introduced me to that. I always thought she was a black singer, but she was not. You know, my, my ears were not so in tune with who sounded like what. So it was uh, interesting to see that she was a white female singer from Detroit that had these skills to bring over dance music, like the way how she did, you know. And it's not that she has like, the, like a great voice. It has nothing to do with being a great voice. What I hear in her voice is determination to be great. And she sounds wonderful in pop music, in, in these songs that she writes, you know? And um, she even describes herself as a performance artist. You know, I think she's very empowering for women, you know? And yeah, and since I, I really wanted to share that with my listeners on this Pot Opinion cast, because she's not somebody who does not include people. She has showed always inclusion in her work with the people who she chose to work with. Everyone, gays, blacks, whites, everyone. She does more than what I see they try to do in the political environment. Sorry, it's true. You know, she, she, she was woke culture before everybody was woke. Straight up. And this is why I'm highlighting this woman. So, that being said, I thank you for watching and listening. My name is Gary Harrison. 
stay humble and stay hungry. This was about Madonna Louise Chacona. Thank you. Peace out.